Good morning, dear students. Uh, I am Dr. Baso Rajapa, Professor and Head Department of Mathematics, Bapuji Institute of Engineering and Technology, Daungere. And in this e Shikshana program, I shall discuss the topic on advanced mathematics, uh, which is the subject for uh, lateral entry students. And uh, that is advanced mathematics first, and the title, subject title is Math Dip 301. And it con consists of the following chapters. The first chapter is trigonometry that includes the details of complex numbers and the applications of complex numbers in the engineering problems. And second topic is differential calculus. This includes the two types of differentials we are going to discuss. One is ordinary differentiation which deals with uh, the calculation of nth order derivative and another one is partial differentiation which also takes the applications in the form of uh, expansions uh, for uh, function of one variable as well as function of two variables. And the next topic is integral calculus. In this integral calculus we shall discuss the topics on reduction formula. The reduction formula uh, goes for all the trigonometric functions but for lateral entry syllabus. Uh, we, we have to discuss only the three topics. The first topic is integration of sin to the power nx and integration of cos to the power nx and integration of product that is sin to the power nx and cos to the power nx and its applications. Because whatever the syllabus VTU has prescribed, all that syllabus will go as an application uh, as a second uh, priority and the first priority is to study the mathematical concepts that is basics of mathematics how they uh, will be useful for engineering problems. And the last topic in this uh, lateral entry syllabus for advanced mathematics first is differential equations. As all of you know, what is the purpose of studying this calculus part in engineering? That is calculus plays a major role in handling various branches of engineering problems. That is if you take an example of civil engineering, you need to calculate the uh, uh, numerical values of stresses and strains and then the relation between stresses and strains which needs the fundamentals of this calculus part, the fundamentals of differentiation uh, which includes both ordinary and as well as partial differentiation. If you take uh, mechanical branch and uh, automobile branch uh, and other related mechanical branches, so there also you will be studying most of the differential equations as fluid flow problems and then heat flow problems. All these problems will include the construction of differential equations and the solution for those constructed differential equations. If you take an electrical engineering, in this electrical engineering we study the problems on flow of the current through the circuits. In, the, in this flow of the current through the circuits we construct once again, otherwise we model the differential equations and with the help of uh, the basic uh, concepts of mathematics that is calculus part and then we deal with flow of the current in uh, uh, as differential equation as a model and then the solution part of it. And if you take electronics and uh, other related electronics branch, you will you, you need to study the uh, wave propagation that is sinusoidal wave and the sharpness of the wave uh, using mathematical concepts that is we will use their Fourier series and then Fourier transforms and then first Fourier transforms and then differential equations. And if we consider IT related branches, IT related branches which require the calculation of maximum accuracy in every algorithm and when we need to write the basic uh, uh, program which needs the sub program which can add the accuracy so that we will get the main uh, uh, equation or main function which will give more accurate answer. Like this every branch of engineering needs the uh, concepts of mathematics. In that direction we shall discuss all these topics uh, related to Math Dip uh, 301 that is advanced mathematics first. Let me write all the chapters and one by one I shall discuss all those details with respect to the applications of mathematics for engineering problems. The first topic is this is the subject uh, title 
and subject code is MATD301. Here you have four uh, important units we can call otherwise four important modules. The first module trigonometry. In this what we study, <coughs> in this what we study complex numbers and second topic is differential calculus in this ordinary differential calculus and partial differential calculus. Of course, here four topics we deal in the case of ordinary differentiation. In the case of uh, partial differentiation, three topics we discuss. And next one is integral calculus. In this reduction formula is our major topic. and the application, the second important application is beta and gamma function. And the last topic is differential equations. In this differential equations, we study the solution of first order ODE. This is a short form that is called ordinary differential equations and solution of first order and second order. Second order, but both will be with constant coefficients. Now I shall discuss one by one. First I will take differential calculus then because all these topics are related to differential calculus. I will complete this differential calculus as a first part and then finally I will uh, uh, conclude uh, with uh, uh, trigonometry that is uh, consisting of complex numbers. Now I shall start with uh, differential calculus that is ordinary differential calculus. What are the subtopics in the ordinary differential calculus? We shall discuss one by one. It is differential calculus. In this nth order differentiation of some standard functions. And Leibniz theorem Of course, here everywhere problems and here polar curves. First of all, I will start with the nth order differentiation of some standard functions. Uh, <coughs> as all of you know, what is the meaning of dependent variable and what is the meaning of independent variable? First we need to understand the sets functions relations chapter and from there onwards limits continuity and first principle of differentiability rules. So from that topic it starts what is the meaning of differentiation and what are the successive derivatives and finally what is the nth derivative nth derivative of standard functions which we come across in the engineering problems. So we shall go one by one on this heading.
the functional relation y equal to fx. This is a functional relation which contains y as dependent variable and x as independent variable. When once you write the value of dy by dx is equal to what exactly this means? That means change in the value of y with respect to change in the value of x. That means this is a functional relation which you can call it dy by dx is equal to f dash of x otherwise that is y1. Any one of these two symbols we use as first order differential equation. What is the meaning of this? This is nothing but limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x as delta x approaches 0. This is the basic definition of differentiation and it can be when limit is applied as delta x approaches 0, you will be getting dy by dx. So, dy by dx takes the meaning y is a function of x. That means y is a dependent variable and x is independent variable. This is what the basic of your differential uh, differentiation definition. That means dy by dx. Then if you call it d square y divided by dx square is equal to f double dash of x and this is called y2 and you are going to add with uh, one more increment. Actually delta x is nothing but first increment on the x axis when you take the graph like this on the x axis. For example, if it is delta x, then delta x, then delta x like that. If you, if you talk about from the origin up to here, one increment if you give, this is the first order derivative and if you take two increments from the origin that is delta x and delta x which will give us the second order differential coefficient. Therefore, this is the next derivative. Similarly, that is f double dash of x and uh, an another symbol also you can make use y suffix 1 and y suffix 2. Other word also we use y subscript, suffix or subscript. Then d cube y divided by dx cube is equal to f triple dash of x is equal to y3 and so on and so on, then you can call it as dNy divided by dxn is equal to fn in the brackets you have to put. If you do not put the brackets for f to the power n, then that indicates as a degree, but here within the brackets means it indicates as derivative. f to the power n of x is equal to yn. This is nth derivative, nth order differentiation of some standard functions. That means nth order derivative is this symbol. So we will make use this symbol for defining various functions for successive derivatives. These are all successive derivatives and at the end, for example, n up to n if you write differentiation, that is n times of delta x. One increment, that is first order derivative two increments, second order derivative and similarly n times increments if you add, you will be getting nth order derivative. This should be known to you. Rather going for the details of the syllabus, first basic thing that means basic concept of differentiation, you must know that very well. What exactly this function represents in your set theory? This becomes y is domain and x is range. So each value of x, when the corresponding value of y takes, then we call it as x is the input, it is called as the independent variable and y is uh, depending on that value what the input you are giving. Therefore, y is directly related to x. Therefore, y is called as dependent variable and x is called as independent variable. You can easily remember the concept uh, from, your, uh, from our daily life. 
For example, uh, when now you are studying and you are getting the benefits, that means financial support from your father, then you are depending on your father. That means your father is independent and you are dependent. Therefore, till you stand on your own legs, after completing your course, when you get a job and then when you stand on your own legs, then you will become independent and your, your uh, dependence will be others. Therefore, this is called dependent variable and this is called independent variable. Otherwise, otherwise, roughly you can speak like this. Left side symbol is always called as dependent variable and right side symbol is always called as independent variable when that is put in the brackets. Now, so with respect to this basic concept, this is called as nth derivative. Now, I shall mention about 6 to 7 results of standard functions for finding the nth order differentiation. And, and in each uh, uh, result, we will solve some problems on the application of that nth order derivative. Okay. Now, the first function let me define for finding the nth order derivative. First one, this is nothing but standard functions. nth order derivative of some standard functions. First one, y is equal to ax plus b and whole to the power m. This is the first result. Even for the exam also you have to start with this result because problems exactly will start from this result itself. In whichever the paper or whichever the scheme you discuss, whenever this title is there, nth order derivative of some standard functions, you can clearly separate. One set of results will be on algebraic functions, second set of results will be on logarithmic functions, third set of results will be on trigonometric functions separately and fourth is uh, trigonometric function and exponential function product. So, these four varieties will cover uh, nth order derivative of some standard functions. This is the first question which you can expect in the exam. For that examination requirement, you start your study from this result onwards. So, what is the nth order derivative for this? That means n times you differentiate. n times you differentiate. According to the syllabus, there is no clarity from uh, uh, the topics which we have to include the bookworks, include the derivations or not, but in a simple way I will explain everything and then I can uh, give you the problems. Now, what is first one? First order derivative, it is nothing but dy by dx equal to y1. What is this? m into ax plus b whole to the power m minus 1 into a. Have you understood this step? I hope uh, you, you have complete knowledge of differentiation and you need to refer the list of formulas of the differentiation. Then in those list of formulas, uh, you have to recall what is the algebraic function differentiation. That means y is equal to x to the power n means y1 is equal to n into x to the power n minus 1. This is your most fundamental formula. Exactly of that type I have written here. But it is a composite function because first of all the power as it is you have to write the differentiation whatever it is there m ax plus b whole to the power m minus 1 into differentiation inside. This is called composite function means function of a function. Therefore, differentiation as it is and the differentiation inside that means one inside differentiation is ax plus b with respect to x only. Therefore, differentiation of b is 0 and ax differentiation gives us a. Therefore, this step can be written as a into m into ax plus b whole to the power m minus 1. This is first order derivative, but we require nth order derivative from this. Let us uh, study this second order derivative. Therefore, m into as it is you have to differentiate that is m minus 1 and one more a will come out when you take differentiation inside which makes us a square and then ax plus b whole to the power m minus 2. 
you can see the clear difference between previous step and next step. That is a into m into again ax plus b whole to the power m minus 1 and m into m minus 1 into 1 more a that makes us a square and differentiation inside because of that a has come out and which makes the power as a, a to the power 2 then ax plus b whole to the power m minus 2 third order derivative y3 that is m into m minus 1 into m minus 2 into a square means a cube ax plus b and whole to the power it is m minus 3. This is the third order derivative. Any doubts occur, any clarification you need, easily you can compare with the first step, uh, second step with the first step, third step with the second step. What we are discussing here is this is a function of a function. That means the power as it is you have to write differentiation that is m and m minus 1 using this basic formula and then differentiation inside with respect to x. With respect to x means you have to take ax plus b, b is 0 and one more a. Similarly, we go for successive derivatives. These are all called successive derivatives. Then n times z equal to m into m minus 1 into m minus 2 into m minus 3 and multiplied and so on here a to the power n a to the power n into that is m minus of n minus 1 into ax plus b and whole to the power it is m minus n. This is the step where you have to understand uh, in depth in depth because here m is there and here 2 is there 1 is there. Okay? Here 1 is there that is m minus 0. This is exactly like m minus 0. That means 1 is there, 1 number less. Here 2 is there, 1 number less. Here 3 is there, 1 number less that is 2. Here n is there. So, its previous number is n minus 1. Therefore, the series ends with ends with m into m minus 1, m minus 2, m minus 3 up to m minus of n minus 1 and here a cube is there, 3 is there, uh, a square is there, 2 is there. Therefore, a to the power n must be matching with it, uh, m minus n form. This is called nth order derivative uh, with respect to x when you take the differentiation. Okay. So, this is the standard result we will use in the problems. Whereas, next result, second one, next result depends on this first result. How we prove? Because every derivative or every step we do not go in the details of uh, the differentiation what we are going to take. Next to find nth derivative to find nth derivative of 1 divided by ax plus b. We will use more this one in the problems. Second result. Okay. How we proceed? Let y is equal to, this one we can choose it as y equal to ax plus b whole to the power minus 1. Is it correct what you understood and what you are following? Hope all of you are following this one. The change which I have written, ax plus b I took it to the numerator. That means here it is just like ax b whole to the power 1, right? That I put it in the numerator as it becomes as with a negative power that is ax plus b whole to the power minus 1. Now, what I will do? I do not write all these details. I will make use of the, I will take the advantage of this result. That is result number first here. Wherever uh, that is n is there, m is there, wherever m is there, I will put it as 1 minus 1 because this is ax plus b whole to the power m is there. This is ax plus b whole to the power minus 1. So, that I am going to replace m by minus 1 in this derived formula. At once you will get the result for nth derivative of this standard function for the second result. Okay, That is what I am going to do this. Now, put m equal to minus 1 in, in uh, first result. First result means first derivation. Okay. So, what you are getting? Yn at the end, we want uh, nth order derivative dn y divided by 
it is dx n. Here also this is d n y divided by dx to the power n. So, that becomes this much and same nth order derivative symbol we put it for second result which is our requirement then we will replace this m by minus 1. Therefore, first term minus 1, second term minus 1 minus 1, third term minus 1 minus 2 and similarly like that it continues like uh, minus 1 minus uh, 3 okay, and continues a to the power n only where m is there that is to be replaced as minus 1. Therefore, this multiplied by minus 1 minus 1 minus of n minus 1 and a x plus b whole to the power minus 1 minus n. If you simplify this one interesting result will come out that interesting result will be used in almost all the algebraic functions where we are going to calculate the nth order derivative. Now carefully observe what I am going to write in the next step. This is minus 1. <coughs> this is minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. This is minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. This is minus 4. Similarly, here minus 1 is there. If I take this minus uh, sign out inside that is minus n and minus of this minus becomes plus sign. Therefore, I can uh, cancel that plus 1 and minus 1. Finally, I am left with only this uh, minus n. Therefore, our result takes in this way. y n nothing but this is d n y divided by d x n. So, minus 1 this minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 multiplied and so on a to the power n and minus 1 minus n plus 1 then a x plus b whole to the power minus of minus of 1 plus n. I kept this minus sign outside then I will be able to write that is minus, or minus of 1 plus n is there. Therefore, here I can cancel this plus 1 and minus 1, minus 1 minus 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 here also minus n. Therefore, minus 1 to the power n times it appears. Okay, 1 into 2 into 3 into so on into n because I took that minus sign here, right. This is the product and a to the power n and this is ax plus b and whole to the power n plus 1 writing minus sign outside. The interesting result is minus 1 to the power n and a to the power n and n factorial divided by a x plus b whole to the power n plus 1. This is y n. This is our interesting result as second one. Finally, you, you uh, uh, verify from the first result to the second result. First result is this one in the series form. Second result is this one in the convergence form we are written. That means in the short form we are written n factorial represents that is 1 into 2 into 3 up to n and a to the power n remains as it is and minus 1 to the power n that is because minus sign appears for n times then I can write this minus 1 to the power n as it is and this quantity I bring it to the denominator to avoid this minus sign so that a x plus b whole to the power n plus 1. So, this is the second result. Now, the next result is again some interesting result with logarithmic function. What is that logarithmic function? Third one, because all these results we use in the problems, y equal to log of ax plus b, y is equal to log of ax plus b. So, whenever we come across the log function, then we need to eliminate log by taking one time differentiation that means first order derivative. 
then we can write this one as y1 1 divided by ax plus b and then differentiation is a further what i will do a into this one a same quantity to the power minus 1 this is for y1 a into ax plus b and whole to the power minus 1 this is first step this is first step and you compare with the previous step here if y is equal to y is equal to 1 divided by ax plus b otherwise ax plus b whole to the power minus 1 if y is equal to ax plus b whole to the power minus 1 then yn is this result here in place of y we have already once differentiated therefore this is y1 is our given function but here y was our given function y was our given function means n times differentiation we got this result now y1 is our given function then n times differentiation is this one means it is enough if you replace n by n minus 1 because n number of times we are not going to take because already once differentiation is done once differentiation process is over once differentiation step is over then we will replace this quantity replace n by n minus 1 in second result you can observe that what happens exactly like here y n is there so n minus 1 means here also n minus 1 means n minus 1 and plus 1 because here we add that thereby you will be getting as y n therefore a is a constant that is nothing to do with our process you keep outside then minus 1 to the power we are replacing n by n minus 1 therefore n minus 1 and a to the power n minus 1 and n minus 1 factorial and divided by ax plus b whole to the power that is n minus 1 and plus 1 you simplify that what you will be getting y n is equal to a here a to the power n minus 1 into a basis same powers can be added that means using the formula of indices you can uh, conclude a to the power n minus 1 plus 1 and minus 1 to the power n minus 1 there is no change in that and there is no change in factorial symbol and also ax plus b and whole to the power that is here plus 1 and minus 1 you can cancel and you will get it as n therefore y n is equal to a to the power this also cancels a to the power n minus 1 to the power n minus 1 n minus 1 factorial ax plus b and whole to the power that is n only this is the result for logarithmic function when that logarithmic function we have uh, uh, to remove this logarithmic function by applying once differentiation then we will make use of this result this is first time differentiation is done then if to get n times means n minus 1 times we have to process it after processing n minus 1 times you will be able to get replacement of n by n minus 1 that is the result uh, for algebraic functions now the next part is the trigonometric function what is that nth order derivative for trigonometric function next uh, fourth result i think y is equal to sin of ax plus b this is our next result what is the nth order derivative for this trigonometric function okay let y1 what is that dy by dx sin becomes cos function ax plus b ax plus b uh, into a 
sin becomes cos function the differentiation then ax plus b differentiation is a. What I will do here a into once again I will express this sin of ax plus b plus of it is pi by 2 because in the allied angles you know that from the trigonometry that is all students take coffee that is ASTC rule all students take coffee you know that uh, this is the angle theta which starts from the anti-clockwise direction this is the radius vector when we take a rotation in the left uh, uh, that means anti-clockwise direction the initial angle of theta is equal to 0 then theta is equal to it is 90 degree and theta is equal to plus pi and theta is equal to that is 3 pi by 2 then this is 2 pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 and this is theta is equal to 360 degree the 360 means 2 pi okay in this allied angles that is sin of 90 plus theta this is 90 sin of 90 plus theta you will get back the cos function uh, here all are positive therefore this is nothing but plus theta this is nothing but this is nothing but minus theta this is nothing but pi by 2 minus theta and this is nothing but pi by 2 plus theta so all these things are familiar to you from the trigonometric basic right then we will use uh, this one uh, sin of 90 degree plus theta this you can call it as together this quantity as theta right sin of 90 plus theta is plus cos theta so every time we express in terms of that cos function uh, sorry sin function then again you take second order derivative a into that means a square cos of ax plus b and plus of pi by 2 once again we express using the same formula that becomes a square into sin of ax plus b plus 2 pi by 2 that means together this quantity we will treat as theta and one more 90 degree we will add that means earlier pi by 2 plus pi by 2 you will get it as 2 pi by 2 so that is the step where uh, it is represented for second order derivative next similarly third order directly I am writing that is a cube into sin of ax plus b plus 3 pi by 2 if you go on doing like this for nth order derivative y n that is a to the power n into sin of a to the power n into sin of ax plus b plus n pi by 2 so this is our required result for first trigonometric function only two trigonometric functions we deal with one is cos function and the another one is sin function now sin function whichever the problem consists of sin trigonometric functions we will use this result and the next one is similarly I hope uh, this I can give it to you as a homework you can do that for similarly for y equal to cos of it is ax plus b implies y n is equal to a to the power n it is cos of ax plus b and hold uh, sorry plus n pi by 2 this is the next required result then uh, last two results three results I am going to derive as product of exponential and trigonometric function okay this is result number this this is result number 5 and result number 6 y is equal to e to the power a x and sin of it is b x plus c so for this you have to do the differentiation very carefully uh, because you have to deal with uh, differentiation as a product of two terms because exponential is multiplied to trigonometric and vice versa sin is trigonometric is multiplied to exponential then y1 first uh, derivative y1 is equal to a into e to the power a x into sin of b x plus c and plus of b into e to the power a x cos of it is b x plus c 
into uh, that is B already written. So, first into derivative of second plus second into derivative of first. I have taken e to the power a x differentiation as a into e to the power a x. This part I kept it constant plus of that is differential coefficient of u into v formula. This formula I have applied. Then uh, second term is constant plus of first term is constant and second term differentiation is sign gives us cos function that is bx plus c into differentiation inside. Differentiation inside means this is b. Now here what we do a equal to r cos alpha and b is equal to r sin alpha. We take like this, it is not polar representation, but it is the representation uh, for uh, uh, utilizing some of the two terms which we expect as only one term. For that purpose, we replace this a and b, these coefficients only we replace here. This gives, this gives, what is that? a square plus b square is equal to alpha square and uh, sorry r square that is uh, squaring and adding and alpha is equal to tan inverse it is b by a. Already in the basic trigonometry you have studied these two things whenever we take uh, transformations uh, which you can uh, treat them as polar form then we will get uh, radius whole square is equal to the length of x whole square plus length of y whole square. This is the circle having the center at the origin. Then alpha is equal to tan inverse of b by a. Therefore, we replace these quantities in the previous step and some of the two terms as we did here, same type here also we are expecting by introducing these quantities. Then what is the term as a single term you are going to expect after introducing those values of a and b in the previous step. You will be getting, I will be directly writing that is here a square plus b square, a square plus b square one term and alpha is equal to tan inverse of b by a. That means a square plus b square means that is 1 r r into e to the power a x okay? and sin of it is b x plus c plus it is alpha that is one time alpha you are getting. Alpha means tan inverse of b by a. Then similarly if you do that r square already you did previous results you saw follow those results r square e to the power a x into sin of it is bx plus c plus of 2 times of alpha like this. If you go for uh, finding nth order derivative that is yn, it is r to the power n and a square plus b square sorry uh, e to the power ax it is sin x uh, b, b into x plus c plus of n times alpha. So, this is the result, but this is not the final result that we have to accept because we have introduced two new symbols and finally we have to remove those two new symbols. One is r and the another one is alpha with these values. That means r value here what it takes r value that is a square plus b square whole to the power that is 1 by 2 uh, that is a square plus b square whole to the power 1 by 2 whole to the power n that makes us n by 2 e to the power a x and sin of it is b x plus c plus n times it is tan inverse it is b by a. So, this is the nth order derivative for the product e to the power a x into sin of b x plus c. That means product whenever we have exponential and a trigonometric function, then we need to find out the nth order derivative by introducing this value of a and value of b in terms of r and alpha, r and alpha with cos function and sin function. So, this is the result. 
Now I leave another part for your homework. Uh, similarly, I write this. Similarly, the result number is 7. Uh, y equal to e to the power ax instead of sine you will have cos that is bx plus c. Okay. So, this gives yn is equal to e to the power ax into cos of that is bx plus c plus n times it is tan inverse b by a. This is the result yn is equal to e to the power ax cos of bx plus c plus n times tan inverse b by a. So, this is the nth order derivative for uh, the product exponential and cosine trigonometric function. And the last one that is uh, result number 8 y is equal to e to the power that is mx. This is the last result. Last means one among the results which you are going to discuss. Okay. Uh, that is y equal to e to the power mx means already you know that exponential term, exponential term is uh, derivative same. y is equal to e to the power uh, x means y dash is equal to e to the power x only. Here you know, I, I give this result to your homework, then y n is equal to m to the power n, m to the power n e to the power m x. So, this is the nth order derivative for uh, exponential term already you are familiar e to the power 2x for example that is m equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 any real number you can assign and then you will get that number whole to the power n.